Good morning. I'm a little bit shorter today. <laughs> Let us pray. Alpha and Omega, you make your home with us and dry our tears and quench our thirst. You are the tender love that welcomes all people. Like a mother, you nurture your children, giving them life, teaching them to love. Come and dwell among us and make all things new. Amen. Our New Testament lesson today comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of my message this morning is Patient Perseverance. In July 1998, farmers in the Southern Plains gathered to pray for rain because of their withered crops. The heat wave had caused the city of Dallas to reach a temperature of 100 degrees or higher for 14 days in a row. It was the worst hit heat wave to hit Texas in 18 years. In Oklahoma, the governor asked everyone in his state to pray for rain. State officials estimated that the heat and drought had cost the state's farmers and ranchers two billion, nearly $2 billion in losses. Normally, members of the Hollis First Baptist Church prayed from their seats. But on this Sunday, the pastor had the people come forward to pray at the altar. It was a special time to pray for rain, he said. Near Geronimo, Oklahoma, 80-year-old Jack Musgrove said, it is so hot, the fields are melting. He wasn't even hoping to get anything from his cornfields, but he was cutting up the plants for livestock feed. He offered his own perspective on praying when he said, I did my 50%, God has to do the other 50%. People have been treated unfairly when they have not been paid for the work they have done. When we are treated unfairly, our tendency is to take things into our own hands instead of trusting God. We need to have patience in the trials we face in life. Often, there is nothing we can do about the trials we face because it is beyond our ability to control. When we have done all that we can do, the only thing left for us to do is to allow God to work things out according to his time and not our own. One of the Puritans, George Swinnick, said, to lengthen my patience is the best way to shorten my troubles. The hardest thing is to be patient and wait for God. Being patient is a command which expresses the gratitude we are to have in trusting God. We are to wait for God to act on our behalf. Patience is a word that means being long-tempered or slow to anger. It is the opposite of the expression short-tempered. The King James Bible often translated the word long-suffering. This word was not used in the classical Greek language, but is a word which Christians use to describe a steadfast spirit that does not give up. It is faith and sovereignty of God. The Romans controlled the ancient world through what they called policy and patience. What it meant was that the Romans' persistence would never make peace under defeat. As believers of Christ, we need to have that kind of patience that endures, delays, and bears suffering and never gives up, believing that God is sovereign and thereby in control of everything. Oswald Chambers had this to say, God takes the saints like a bow, which he stretches, and at a certain point it says, I cannot take it anymore. But God does not heed. He goes on stretching because he is aiming at his mark, not ours, and the patience of the saints that they hang in until God lets the arrow fly. The farmer in Palestine had to wait for the early rain so the seed would germinate. 
The later came in April and was needed to make the grain mature just before the harvest in May, June, and July. Like the farmer, believers need to be patient for God to act. Being patient is referring to trusting God. Establish is a word from the Greek language meaning to fix in your mind. It is to believe that something is true so you don't doubt it. The phrase at hand refers to keeping something close by. So keep God close because the Lord could return at any time. Christians need to wait until Christ returns and he will make all things right. If we believe that Jesus is coming back, we should be willing to endure injustice and suffering because we know he will punish the wicked and reward the righteous. Being patient with one another, or meaning, meaning we should not groan or express outwardly our inner feelings of bitterness or resentment towards others. Our inward attitude is demonstrated outwardly in criticizing, complaining, and finding fault in others in what they do and how they do it. While we, should, while we are waiting for God to act, we must not blame one another for the situations and trouble in which we find ourselves. We, nev- we need to remember a few things when facing trials. First of all, it is easier to blame others than to look at what God is trying to teach us through this. Number two, Satan would have you focus on the trial and not God. He will do anything to frustrate your faith in God. Third, learn to be faithful, kind, and gentle, because God is building your character to be like Christ. The word judge comes from the Greek language, and it means to form an opinion of right or wrong. It is to determine if someone is guilty or innocent of a crime. God, the judge, is ready at any moment to step in and take over the situations we find ourselves in. He wants us to trust him. The reason he waits for us is because he wants us to have the right response he is looking for. Sometimes he waits and waits because we don't do the right thing in the trial we are facing. Throughout the Old Testament, the prophets remained faithful to the Lord even though they were abused by the kings, mistreated by the leaders, and rejected by the people because they didn't want to hear the truth. Jeremiah was beaten by authorities, put in the stocks, and left to die in a well that had no water in it. He ministered to two different kings, but his message of repentance was rejected. So, because of their faithfulness, despite their persecution, we honor and respect them for standing firm in the midst of their trials. An example of remaining steadfast in times of trials is Job. Job lost his possessions, his seven sons and three daughters, in a windstorm, and then his health because of terrible sores. But he never lost his faith in God. Job 13.15 says, Though God slay me, yet will I have hope in him. Job questioned and struggled in trying to understand why he was suffering so terribly, but never lost his faith in God. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first part. He blessed him materially with more flocks than he had before, seven more sons, and three more daughters. If you are steadfast in your faith during trials, like Job, God will give you the same mercy and compassion he did for Job. James uses two unique words to describe God's care for us. One, compassion, or very sympathetic. God feels deeply the pain which we experience during our trials. The other word is merciful, meaning God shows favor by meeting our personal needs. The difference between these two words is that the first word reveals the general quality of compassion. The second word emphasizes the sympathy we need in our present trials or challenges. God knows exactly what we need in the challenges we are facing. He may give us a word of encouragement through scripture. He may send us a sermon to uplift us. He may send someone to be our friend during difficult times. He may change our circumstances completely. 
he may also use the trial to develop our character. To bring it all together, trials are a test in our faith in God. When we trust in him, he will never fail us. Our job is to be faithful to him, no matter what happens. Jonathan Goforth went to China as a missionary in 1887. He became known for his leadership in the revivals that swept through the country in the early 1900s. He was convinced he needed to move to the city of Changte to minister there. His faith, though, was severely tested when he visited the city and was mobbed and threatened by the people. Four years later, he asked the presbytery to give him permission to buy property in Changte to start work there, but they turned him down because they did not feel they had enough manpower to support another mission station. The following year, he asked for permission, but once again was turned down. He went forth and kept on praying and believing that God would send him to Changte. At last, the answer came. The following year, in 1894, he was given permission to open a new station there. The next morning at daybreak, he headed to Changte. His whole body was filled with joy and hope because he could see the fulfillment of his dream to minister there. As he traveled that day, he prayed God would give him the best site, the site of his choosing for the mission statement. How wonderfully God answered the prayer. Within 24 hours of reaching the city, he received 35 offers of property, and one of them was the very site that he had chosen years earlier as the ideal site. God rewards our patient per perseverance in waiting for his perfect timing to work everything out. The Lord is by your side. Bear patiently the cross of great pain. Leave things to God to order and provide. In every challenge, he will, remain, he will faithfully remain. Our God does undertake to guide the future as he has in the past. No, let nothing shake your confidence. The waves and the wind still know his voice, and he will still be a help in times of trouble.